Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship this morning at Lake Harbor United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Mary Ivanov. I'm grateful that we can worship together today, whether we're gathered here in our sanctuary or gathered together uh, virtually. It is a blessing to offer God this time of worship. So I would invite those who are here in the sanctuary to stand as you're able, and we'll offer praise together as you're joining us online. I hope that uh, you'll offer praise with us too. We're going to sing three verses of My Hope is Built. and I would invite you to remain standing as we center our hearts with words from the Psalms. I'm grateful for Ken Luckett, who is here to lead us. Good morning. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will and praise, praise the, Lord, the Lord who counsels, who counsels me. me. Even, Even at night, night, my heart, heart instructs, instructs me. me. I will keep, keep my eyes always on the Lord. With, with him, him at my right hand, hand I, will I will not be shaken. shaken. It is a blessing to be gathered. You may be seated this morning. I want to draw your attention to the light here on our altar, that reminder of the light of Christ that leads us every day, the presence of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, active and alive in our lives and with us here as we worship, whether we're gathered together in the sanctuary, whether at home, wherever we are this morning. And we want to take a moment to share the love of Christ, the peace of Christ with one another. So if you're here in the sanctuary, offer a wave to those around you. If you're joining us online this morning, we welcome you and invite you uh, to let us know that you're worshiping with us, uh, just with praying hands or a heart or just a check-in. It is good to be gathered together. And again, I want to welcome you to worship this morning as we continue our series, Building a Strong Family of God. And that word family is guiding us in this series. We're using uh, each letter to flesh out some themes. We started uh, three weeks ago with faith. Uh, we, then we talked about asking for and offering forgiveness. Last week we talked about making commitments. And today we're on the I in family, invest in each other. This really is a series about stewardship, how we manage all of God's gifts in our lives, including uh, how we honor relationships with each other. We're called to invest in each other, being with one another when times are good and when times are tough or when it's difficult, uncomfortable, or even convicting. And being vulnerable with each other allows God to strengthen us together as the body of Christ and build the kingdom here and now. So that's where we're headed today. Uh, focusing on that. I want to offer just a few announcements uh, and an invitation, as always, to send in your prayer requests to our office email, office at lakeharborumc.org. We do have an email prayer chain uh, that we offer together. 
Uh, also, just an in-your God moments. Those times this past week when God's grace and God's presence have been particularly powerful for you. Uh, that's always a blessing to share with each other. So I, I invite you to send those in uh, today. Just a reminder, we have Christian education for uh, kids in pre-K through 12th grade, uh, beginning at 1015. Uh, this afternoon, we have a special event, and you'll see uh, a an image for that, a slide for that, a blessing of the animals. This is something new for us. Uh, you may have heard it before it comes, uh, actually in celebration of the feast day of St. Francis of Assisi, which is in October. Uh, it's something that uh, lots of congregations have, have started to do just as a reminder of uh, the, the wonderful grace that uh, our blessed pet companions show us. Uh, and so whether that's a dog or a cat or a gerbil or something else, uh, we want to just take that time to celebrate God's grace through them. And so we'll meet today, 4 o'clock, in our back parking lot here, uh, just a, a time to, to celebrate and give thanks. Uh, tomorrow uh, afternoon at noon, we have um, our next worship brainstorming time for uh, a series on prayer. And so you're invited if you'd like to join us. We'll have a potluck lunch at noon and then we'll start brainstorming right after that uh, here at the church. We continue to have grief share every week, uh, Monday nights, 6.30 in our fellowship hall. There are lots of opportunities for study as well. We have a Tuesday morning study, uh, a Tuesday night women's Bible study, and this week, uh, Tuesday night, also there'll be a men's study that's going to be starting, 7 o'clock. They're going to be uh, studying the book of Exodus and uh, focusing on the person of Moses. So uh, all men are invited for that. Youth group continues. Choir rehearsal will continue on Wednesday nights. Uh, we have a Saturday sisters group that meets on Saturday mornings. And then next, uh, next Saturday at 11, uh, we have our education team is offering uh, what we're calling the following fest. Uh, a fall event for uh, everyone. All are welcome. We'll do that in our parking lot as well. Just lots of activities uh, for uh, kids of all ages. So uh, people are invited to, you're invited to that. You're invited to invite others to that as well. Uh, so it is good to be gathered together. I'm going to invite Ken to come forward again and invite you to stand as you're able as we offer uh, our call to worship this morning. We gather together to worship, knowing that God is already here among us. Knowing that there is nothing that separates us from the presence of our Lord. Wherever we are, wherever we go, God is near. So let us worship with confidence and hope, knowing that God is already here with us. Eager to meet us and bless us with love and grace. We worship together. Offering one, one another, another our, our presence, presence as we, as we affirm, affirm our, our faith, faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Friends, you may be seated. We have the blessing today of the ministry of music from our choir. Uh, some of you will recognize some of these uh, songs that we sing, so enjoy this morning, and may God bless you through this ministry.
it's a blessing to share music together. I want to invite uh, all those of us who are young and young at heart uh, to pay close attention for a couple of moments. Uh, we're going to say good morning. I'm going to say good morning on, on the count of three, and I would invite you to respond with a good morning. Here we go. One, two, three. Good morning. It is good to be gathered together. Uh, for those of you who are here, for those of you who might be watching, uh, who are, again, young or young at heart, uh, I have a couple of questions this morning. So, uh, how many of you have ever heard someone say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me? How many of you have ever heard that? How many of you believe it? I think words can sometimes hurt us, though. The things that people say to us can really, uh, they can really hurt our hearts. They can make us feel really sad. Um, so, the other part of that is, though, we know that words can hurt. We also know that words can help. They can be something that we can say to encourage each other. And that's what we're really talking about today, is how we encourage each other. So um, I want you to, to uh, take a look. Um, there's a lot of scriptures that we use, but I want you to take a look here. How many of you like sticky notes? I love sticky notes. Um, I like to make lists on sticky notes. I like to uh, make notes. They, they're a wonderful invention. Whoever thought of them is so, so smart. Uh, so we have some sticky notes up here, um, and I would uh, just draw your attention to a couple of them. You can see these are, these are pretty simple sayings, right? Do your best. God loves you. Way to go. Um, sometimes there's a, a, a psalm there that's referenced. You're going to have a great day. Um, how many of you have ever received a note like that that has given you some encouragement, even if it's just something really, really simple? Uh, sometimes those simple things can really, really help us. So, um, and there's a lot of places in the Bible where it talks about encouraging one another, being with each other. And we know that God loves us and encourages us, but we also know how important it is to be together, uh, to be able to worship God together, whether we do that together in the sanctuary or together online. We know how important it is to learn together and grow together. So uh, I want us to think about that today. There's a place in Scripture, we're going we're gonna to see this reference later, but uh, in one of the earliest letters that was written to the church, it says, encourage one another and build each other up. That's part of what we do when we come together in worship and in uh, whether it's Sunday school together, whether it's youth group, we encourage each other. Uh, and I looked up that word, we, I use the word encouragement a lot, but I looked up that word, and it's a really powerful word. Um, and so it, it means to give courage, to put courage into, to, to help somebody have confidence, to help somebody have strength. Because sometimes we need people to do that for us. We need people to help us do that. Sometimes we don't feel very strong, at least I don't sometimes. And so to have somebody say, you know what, you can do this. It's going to be okay. That's really important, and we can do that for each other. You can do that at school. When you see somebody struggling, you can give them a word of encouragement. Um, and maybe if you have a sticky note like this, you could write something down and just put it on somebody's desk and say, this is a word of encouragement for you today. So um, we can all do that. No matter how old or young we are, we can all give some uh, encouragement to each other. So uh, even though you might feel uh, like you can't do that, because you're really young, that, does, that doesn't matter at all. I have some pictures on my office door that some of you have made for me that give me encouragement, that remind me that we are connected together uh, here at the church, and that's a really wonderful thing. Uh, and you've probably encouraged somebody without even knowing it, probably given them, uh, if you've given them a picture, if you've given them uh, a hug or just uh, helped them out, you've done that uh, even without knowing it. So I want to challenge all of us to think about ways that we can encourage each other and I'm going to have these sticky notes if somebody wants to take one after worship today, uh, a way that you could maybe write a note of encouragement and give it to someone this week, wherever you are, uh, reminding us that that's part of what we do together as the church. We encourage each other. So let's pray together this morning. Dear Lord, please lead each of us this week to someone who needs our encouragement and help us to offer that encouragement, remembering that uh, that's what you call us to do. That's how you call us to help each other. We're so grateful for that, and I uh, just pray that you would continue to give us those opportunities, show us those opportunities uh, of how we can encourage each other and help each other and love each other in your name. Amen. So we have um, 
the blessing this morning of, uh, and, and for those who are watching, uh, this is a, a form of encouragement that we're going to see this morning. Um, some of you know we have been worshiping both in person and online uh, since the middle of March in 2020. And if you would have told me in the middle of March of 2020 that in uh, the middle of October in 2021, I would be asking someone who lives in Missouri uh, to record something for us to use in worship, I probably would not have believed you. Uh, this has kind of been an amazing journey in some ways, um, the ways that we've been able to, to adapt to this time. And so we have uh, a woman named Nancy Robertson who worships online with us. If you've ever been online, you might have seen her check in. Uh, and so I asked her if she would be willing to record for us uh, just uh, her witness about what it means to be invested with each other. So you're going to hear some of her story. You're going to hear how she came to be connected here. And you're also going to hear the challenge of what it means uh, to invest in each other. So uh, take a listen. Good morning, Lake Harbor. Nancy Robertson here coming to you from the Missouri Ozarks, which today, as you can see in here, are very rainy. Pastor Mary asked me to come to you to talk about my involvement in your congregation, which I now look at as our congregation. Though I live far, far away, I share a friend with you, Jan Justice, who moved to you in Michigan from here in Missouri two years ago nearly two and a half years ago. When Jan first came to the Muskegon area, one of the first things she did was look for a church home and she found you all. It's one of the things that gave her the greatest delight in the move besides being close to her daughter and her grandchildren. So when she found you, she was remarkable in the joy with which she spoke. She said that when we talked on the phone, she said that this was a church family that felt like a family. You were welcoming, you took her under your wing. Pastor Mary was very interested in getting Jan involved in things. She quickly became a part of the Tuesday morning Bible study and was uh, faithful to that, even when they were meeting outdoors in the parking lot at the beginning of COVID and remains faithful to that. She has invested herself in your congregation, in our congregation. One of the things that Jan knew about me because we've known one another for many, many years is that 20 years ago, I left the church. I didn't leave God, I didn't leave Christ, but I left the organized church. It was a surprise to me when with COVID, which we know God can use for good, even if it's something as bad as COVID, when you all started having the virtual online services, I asked Jan if I could start attending with her on Sundays. First, I missed her very much, but I also was intrigued by the investment that your congregation and the members seem to have in social justice issues and local mission uh, ministry, of course, and even in things like MAP. And so I started attending with Jan on uh, Sunday mornings. In the year, more than a year that has passed that I've been attending, I have come to think of Lake Harbor as my church. For someone who has been away from the church for so long, this is a big deal. You all have invested in many things, in the people of the community, in the people of the congregation, in one another. You are so warm and welcoming. Uh, even when the congregation was all at home worshiping, the love came through in Mary Scott's music, in Mike's music, in the quartet. It's, it's just, I can't tell you how you all have touched my hearts. So your investment in what you do every day has made a difference in who knows how many lives, but at least in this life right here in Little Branson, West Missouri. 
Pastor Mary uh, in asking me about sharing some of my ideas about what it means on investing in one another in communities of faith said, well, just tell the story of how you came to be here. Well, how I came to be here was totally because of Jan, because of her love for your congregation, for the work that Lake Harbor does, for Pastor Mary and her leadership, her spiritual guidance. It took a lot to get me to come back to church after 20 years. Today's reading in Hebrews, part of it kind of hit home for me, said, don't give up meeting together as some have the habit of doing. Well, at first I thought I had good reason, but after a few years, it became a habit. So now, because of you, because of your investment in virtual services, in one another, in all the work that Lake Harbor does to welcome people every day, the work you do with women's issues, with the poor, with the homeless, with the hungry, all of that speaks to me. And I feel blessed to be a part of our congregation, of the work that is done by Lake Harbor. I just want to say one more thing about today's passage in Hebrews. It says, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. It's very obvious that you in Michigan are doing that every day and you are teaching me how to be a part of that and to come back to the church after so many years. And I want to thank you, tell you that I am blessed and grateful, tell you that our friend Jan is a wonder with her ministry of the cards and her ministry of soft invitation. I want to thank Pastor Mary and I want to say investing in small communities of faith, large communities of faith, just investing ourselves in one another is what God calls us to do. And I'm so glad he called me to be a part of you. Thanks. I'm grateful for that witness. And I know um, that Nancy's probably watching this morning. So Nancy, we're grateful that you are part of our congregation. Uh, and I'm so thankful that you were willing to share that this morning. Friends, it's good to be gathered to remember uh, why we gather, to know that we are connected to one another, invested with each other in, in doing life together. Uh, and certainly in the last year and a half, in a very different way than we ever anticipated. Like I said, I, can't, I could not have told you a year and a half ago that we'd be uh, connecting with people around the country, even around the world. It's a pretty amazing thing. Uh, so I'm grateful for that. I want to invite you to stand uh, as you're able as we pray together today. And Ken will lead us this morning. Almighty God, you know our hearts. Nothing is hidden from you. You know us intimately, the struggles and the joys Thank you for giving us a loving community of faith to offer encouragement and motivation to live our faith each day. Send the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit to convict us, us and comfort us that we would love you more fully, love, love one another more, more graciously, bless others in your name, and give you praise through our daily lives. We pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Our hearts are made clean and our bodies washed with the water of God's love. Through the gift of Jesus Christ, God assures us that we are pardoned, forgiven, and free to live in God's grace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
may be seated. Today, as we come to a time of offering, I want to give thanks for the care and compassion of uh, our church community and how much it matters to people when I visit to know that others are praying for them. Uh, prayers are a part of what we offer as good stewards of all of God's gifts. And uh, I'm thinking that probably uh, many of you have received something in the mail from the church. It's an opportunity, a mailing that invites all of us to consider our faith commitments for uh, the next year, for 2022. Our gifts matter every day, and our witness, uh, they're a witness to God's grace and love in our lives and a witness to the world. So I invite you uh, to continue to pray about uh, and take time to pray about how you will make a commitment to God in the coming year. Those prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness, how uh, that will show in your life. And we do that together, each of us individually, but those gifts and those commitments come together uh, as an investment in, uh, in one another as the body of Christ. So in the next two weeks, uh, in two weeks from today, actually, on October 31st, which is when we'll also celebrate All Saints Day, uh, we'll offer those commitments to God as we remember the saints in our lives who have offered their gifts, who have shown us God's love, and who have served others. Uh, so I just want to also lift up the other opportunities that we have for offering beyond our, our regular offering, uh, a noisy offering this month to support uh, Crop Walk and Church World Services work around the world, including caring for refugees. Uh, those opportunities we have to give tangible items for MAP and for hand-to-hand -hand ministries. Remember that we're collecting uh, small cans of chicken noodle soup, a very specific item, uh, to help our friends at Temple United Methodist Church uh, to reach out to uh, the community in Muskegon Heights and, and provide supplemental care and food for kids on the weekends. Uh, during this time of offering, we'll see our God moments from this past week, and I would invite you to take time to prepare your offering, whether you're here in the sanctuary. We have uh, offering plates at the back and noisy offering buckets as well. Uh, if you're at home, uh, you can prepare an offering, go online and give it our website, uh, lakeharborumc.org. It's a blessing always to uh, be able to share these God moments, and again, I would invite all of us to write those down, to send those in, uh, as a reminder of God's grace in our lives. So let's worship God together this morning. How good it is to read those reflections. Um, I'm going to start having God days. I like that idea. Not just God moments, but God days. 
what a blessing uh, to read those and to know uh, that God is at work in our lives in so many different ways. Would you pray with me? Uh, first, we're going to sing together, uh, bind us together, a short chorus. Uh, we'll sing it through uh, fully one time, and then we're going to pray together. Let's sing. Let's pray together this morning. Like God's servants of old, we glorify the rock of our faith. As a parent delights in children, so our God delights when we follow the way of Christ. May these words live in our hearts and turn our minds toward the one who brings us life. Amen. And I invite you to hear these words from the book of Hebrews chapter 10 beginning with verse 19. My friends, the blood of Jesus gives us courage to enter the most holy place by a new way that leads to life. And this way takes us through the curtain that is Christ himself. We have a great high priest who is in charge of God's house, so let's come near God with pure hearts and a confidence that comes from having faith. Let's keep our hearts pure, our consciences free from evil, and our bodies washed with clean water. We must hold tightly to the hope that we say is ours. After all, we can trust the one who made the agreement with us. We should keep on encouraging each other to be thoughtful and to do helpful things. Some people have gotten out of the habit of meeting for worship, but we must not do that. We should keep on encouraging each other, especially since you know that the day of the Lord's coming is getting closer. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. One of the foundational themes of this series is that God's desire is to make us stronger in our relationships with each other, whether it's with family, our community, our congregation, or the larger body of Christ. We're created for connection with each other. And with God. And in the words of Brene Brown, some of you might have heard of Brene Brown. She's a renowned social worker and professor and researcher. She says, connection is why we're here. It's why we're here. In the creation account in Genesis, God says it's not good for us to be alone. And our connections may not all look the same, but nurturing those connections and those relationships is vital. I'm so grateful for Nancy's witness to us about how God can use even the challenges of this past year plus to bring us together in new ways and help us see the gift of one another. Her willingness to step out in faith and join us online for worship and then get involved in supporting mission and ministry, praying with us, joining us on Tuesday morning Bible study. We join by Zoom. I put her right next to me on the computer and so she can see most of the table as we sit there on, on Tuesday mornings. It's been a powerful reminder to me that God is at work in mighty ways that I never would have imagined. As we're talking about building a strong family of God, we also have to consider how we're reflecting God's love to the world around us. As a Christian, do I honor one another? 
do I not honor others in my relationships? As a community of faith, how do we honor one another? As a part of the body of Christ, how are we showing others what it means to follow Jesus daily? Not just saying that we do, but inviting Jesus to form our lives around the call to love God and love others. We claim our faith in Christ, which informs our lives. We do the work of asking for and offering forgiveness, grounded in God's forgiveness to us. We make commitments and keep them. And again, I want to lift up that opportunity we have to prayerfully consider our commitment to God through this congregation, offering our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. We commit because God is committed to us, and those commitments push us to invest in life together. Last week during our celebration service, we celebrated a baptism in our church family, which is a great reminder of our commitment to love and care for each other, including the promises we make to nurture one another in our Christian faith and life in baptism. We do that every time, that reminder of that's who we're called to be, to help each other in our Christian faith and life. We know it's true in the early church as the people shared with each other. We read that in Acts last week. Cultivating community requires time and energy and a willingness to risk engaging with new people. That sometimes takes uh, some vulnerability on our part. And for the early church, at least, all of it was happening in an unsettled time when new converts were trying to keep the faith. They needed God's help, but their presence with each other was a gift and an offering of encouragement. And so we're going to see some words about encouragement today, but the first one comes from 1 Thessalonians. Again, one of the earliest New Testament letters, and it says this, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Again, it's all grounded in God who loves us first. God is deeply invested in our lives as creator, redeemer, and sustainer always with us, seeking us, helping us, challenging us, and ultimately transforming our hearts day by day as we offer God our lives and trust in God's care. Living out our faith means that we are with each other, even when it's difficult, uncomfortable, or convicting. Anybody ever felt that in the church? And has it been difficult or uncomfortable or convicting sometimes to be with each other? Maybe you've heard this verse from Proverbs before, but it's a powerful one from Proverbs 27 and a powerful reminder. Just as iron sharpens iron, friends sharpen the minds of each other. When we invest in spiritual friendships, we help each other and we build the kingdom of God together. We focused on the faith chapter in the book of Hebrews when we began this series a few weeks ago. Remember that the writer of this letter is trying to rally God's people, many of them new Christians who had converted from Judaism. And the appeal is especially focused on Jesus, who Jesus is, who, and Jesus who makes it possible for us to stand before God. Now, one of the titles, if you read the book of Hebrews, one of the titles that you'll see throughout it is that Jesus is the great high priest. For those who were familiar with temple worship, which a lot of these readers were, the high priest was allowed into the most holy place to offer sacrifices to God. So there's a call to confidence. Have confidence in the work of Jesus, in the person of Jesus, to claim that his sacrifice is all that's needed for our salvation. And there's a call to unwavering hope in God's faithfulness. But then there's a call that goes beyond just God's work in Jesus. That's the foundational piece. But then the writer turns to the community community of faith and tells them to show love and to do good deeds, a response to their faith in Christ. But it would seem that their response is connected to their being together, showing up for each other, especially as they anticipate the return of Jesus any time. And that was their perspective Their perspective may be different than ours. We don't know when Jesus will come again, though we're called to be ready. Even so, this word about encouragement is vital to our life together. And sometimes we forget it. We forget about that call to encourage one another in faith. I want to show you another quote from Chuck Swindoll about encouragement. Encouragement is awesome. It can actually change the course of another person's day, week, or life. 
And probably if you thought about it for a moment, I hope that you can think about some time that that's been true for you. I think we know that's true. I hope we can think of some examples for ourselves of someone who has encouraged us uh, because we know the opposite is true. Discouragement can really affect us too, but encouragement can help us. When I started thinking about the word courage or the word encourage, I realized that, that it literally means to put courage into, to make strong, and it actually comes from the, the root word is core, uh, which means heart. Think about coronary. So that's the root word of courage. We know that when scripture talks about the heart, it's talking about motivation and intention rather than the actual organ that's pumping in our chest. But putting courage into one another. Who is a person who has put courage into you? When I thought about it that way, I thought about a lot of people over a long time who have offered courage to put courage into me, to help me to affirm, uh, to push me to do things I didn't think were possible. Again, Brene Brown would say that courage is our ability to tell the story of who we are with our whole heart. That seems like what God asks from us, to live wholeheartedly. And it's clear that we can't do that alone. It requires relationships and help and investment from one another. So I don't know how many of you know uh, this man. I'm going to show you a picture. Some of you might. Some of you might have heard of Ted Lasso. If you haven't, it's okay. Uh, I, I uh, just became more familiar with the series lately, but... Uh, this is Ted Lasso. He's a character from a very popular TV show that just swept through the Emmy Awards. Uh, now, I'm a little late getting to this show, but it has captured me. Captured me. It is amazing. Lasso is a football coach, an American football coach, who's hired to coach soccer, football, which is soccer, in England, with the, club's owner's intent, the club owner's intent that he will run the team into the ground. That's the goal when she hires him. She wants him to basically run the team in the, in the ground to spite her ex-husband because Lasso doesn't know much about soccer at all. He really doesn't know anything about it. And it's true, Lasso doesn't know the soccer rules, but here's what he does know. He knows about coaching, and he knows about people. And he's able to do amazing things. Now, things don't turn out as planned for the club owner. Lasso endears himself to her, to his team, to everyone around him. His ability to be a true coach, to bring out the best in others, is miraculous. And a part of his work is really the epitome of what encouragement is, to put courage into others, to help them live wholeheartedly. If you watch it, here's a disclaimer, it is not child appropriate. Okay, I'm just going to tell you that now. So when you watch it and go, oh my gosh, I can't believe she told us to watch this. It's not that there's some language, but it's a really good story about how we invest in each other and how that changes our lives for the better. It's a great story. It's a feel-good show in many ways, but it also tells the truth that investing in one another isn't always easy. There are moments of deep pain, dishonesty, disregard for others' feelings and struggles, and the need for forgiveness. The hope is that we wouldn't experience those difficulties, but we do. No matter if it's the people closest to us, or the groups we belong to, or all the connections we have. I shared a quote from a pastor colleague last week that I think bears repeating. To join a church is to commit to a social circle you do not get to choose. I love that. It's true. To join a church is to commit to a social circle that we don't choose. It's God who does that work in us. It's our faith in Christ that connects us, but we have to go beyond that too. Growing deeper in our faith means that we open up to God, even though God knows us intimately. And that relationship can only be strengthened when we're vulnerable with God, not holding back, but knowing that God calls us beloved, just as we are. How difficult would it be for you and me to look Jesus in the eye and speak our hearts to him? If he was here right now, would we come to him knowing how deeply we're loved? I wonder if we might struggle a bit to really believe that God wants us to be together, that God wants us to be with him. 
I think of people who took the risk to come to, to Christ for healing, making themselves completely vulnerable and fully seen by him. But we start there. We start with God's full investment in us as beloved children brought together in the family of God. And we see it throughout scripture, especially in the work of Jesus and the ministry and mission of Jesus, to see people just as they are, to receive them, to transform them. We have to be willing to be vulnerable with each other, to open our hearts, to share ourselves. And one more word from Brene Brown. She explains it this way. In order for connection to happen, we have to allow ourselves to be seen, really seen. And as I thought about Jesus' ministry, that's really what happened when people came to him. He saw them fully. And because of that, he was able to share with them, to love them, to have them receive his love fully. For many of us, that can be scary because it's really risky. Will we be embraced or rejected? Will we be welcomed or turned away? Will we be taken seriously or laughed off? God loves me, but will everyone else? As we struggle with those questions, we can also claim that need for encouragement. It's part of what it means to invest in each other to invest in others. We all need that encouragement. We need the encouragement of being together. And I love this word. How do you you identify someone who needs encouragement? That person is breathing. (laughs) One more time. How do you identify someone who needs encouragement? That person is breathing. We all need it. No matter who we are, we need to be encouraged. We need to be reminded that we are loved and cared for. In our life together, those opportunities, I think, to be vulnerable and really to find that encouragement happen best in smaller groups, whether it's Bible studies or worship brainstorming times or music or youth group or Sunday school or teams or committees. Yes, it can even happen in a committee, would you believe it, where we work together or we pray for each other. Many of you have strong spiritual friendships because of time you've invested together. Learning, serving, helping, sharing. That's one way we invest in each other and build a strong family of God. I was with Nola Jean Wilson this week. She is one of two charter members of this congregation uh, who are still with us on this side of eternity And for me, Nola Jean is one of those people who has a deep spiritual wisdom, a deep prayer life, uh, who deeply loves, uh, loves God and loves others. And it was a blessing to be reminded of that uh, as I was with her and to be reminded of what she's invested uh, in this family of God, what she's invested in this congregation. When we're asked to invest in something, What do we want to know? What do you want to know when you are asked to invest? What's the word? We want to know the return, right? We want to know the return. And if we're talking about a community of faith, sometimes we see the return right away. But many times we might not. I've been thinking about that as we continue to celebrate 65 years of ministry here. All the people who invested their hearts and resources to make this congregation a reality. And I often wonder if the people who were encouragers, who were part of that, ever fully understood what they were doing in that investment. How that would affect us so many years later. So then it makes me think about my own life. And I often wonder if the people who encouraged me know how much they helped me to grow in faith. Know how much it meant to have that word of encouragement. Because I can tell you countless times when that word has come just at just the right time. Just when it was needed. Uh, And I would say that that's a God moment, certainly. A Holy Spirit sort of uh, endeavor where it comes just when it needs to come. Beyond those personal connections, we can claim the spiritual work of encouragement and investing in each other. Because it really does matter. So I want to offer one last quote this morning. You'll see it here. What we have done for our, our, ourselves alone dies with us. What we've done for others and the world remains and is immortal. 
That's a powerful thing. Our loving, our serving, our giving is never in vain, even if we don't see the return immediately. As we're considering how God is calling us to make commitments, I hope we'll especially consider those opportunities to connect to others, to encourage, to put courage in, to invest, and to know that it matters for God's sake for the work that God is doing even now to build the kingdom. Brothers and sisters, we invest in each other because God works wonders through the community of faith, through the body of Christ. You and I are witnesses to that. There are moments, there are times in our lives when the body of Christ has been an incredible source of encouragement for us. What we needed, that reminder that when we didn't have the courage on our own, there were people praying for us, helping us, standing with us, walking with us. That's a blessing. It's a gift. It's a gift that we can continue to offer to one another. So let's invest in each other, knowing that it matters. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, thank you for the gift of encouragement, for the gift that you give us every day of being loving, of being gracious, of being merciful, of being kind. We thank you for everything we delight in, especially in this season, for color around us, for the blazing color of the leaves. We give you thanks for the beauty of music, for the things that come to mind when we think about our blessings and gratitude. We thank you for friendships, for good work to do, for all the gifts to our bodies and our souls. And most of all, today we delight in your salvation, the knowledge of your love, the assurance of eternal life through Christ. As we pray today, We lift up those who are in need, in need of your love and care, those who are lonely, those who are ill, those who are in the midst of the last days of their earthly lives, but trusting in you to lead them still. We pray for those who are struggling, for those who work in harsh conditions, for those who are seeking employment, for those who really struggle every day to find connection, to find encouragement, for those who are hungry and homeless, and for the ministries and missions we can be part of to make that less of a reality. Help us to offer help and comfort in every way we can, to offer that spiritual encouragement that enables all of us to live with hope, And help us to do it remembering that we do it for your sake and for the building of your kingdom. We pray for people at every age, for those who are the most mature in years, for a clear faith and support for their needs. For those who are in the middle of life, give us wisdom in our choices. Help us all to... Remember to have a sense of wonder and awe and mystery at how you work. We pray for the youngest among us. We pray for the opportunities ahead. We pray for your wisdom to guide them too. God, we pray that all of us at every age would continue to seek you, to make you known in Christ, who is our greatest friend. Thank you, God, for blessing us. Thank you for those who have gone before us, who have been encouragers and helpers, and who now rest with you in perfect peace. With them, we honor and we praise your name, and we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
Amen. Friends, I would invite you to stand as you're able and as we go out into the world to be encouragers this morning. We'll sing together uh, the blessing. We'll sing it through uh, two times. to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn go from this place, encouraged, strengthened, empowered to live as God's people, to offer that same encouragement to others who are seeking it. May God bless you. Go in peace and make peace. Amen.